Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the May Luncheon for the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance. This is our biannual governmental affairs luncheon, and what a great turnout today. We're so glad to see everyone. Lots of great faces and a, a room full of some very influential people here today. Uh, I'd like to start off by asking Don O'Leary with East Manatee Fire Rescue to please join me on the stage to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we get a check? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Don, the check is in the mail. <laughs> Uh, I want to start out today, um, back during our March meeting, uh, many of you were here for another packed house luncheon where we had Rex Jensen give us a State of the Ranch update. So how exciting for us to follow up that meeting, broadening our scope, looking at both counties here in the region, both Sarasota and Manatee County. I want to start off the luncheon today by recognizing um, some of the influential um, leaders here in our community. If we could, we'll get through it a lot quicker if we hold our applause to the end. So if I, when I say your name, if you just want to give a wave and then we, we will give everyone a grand applause um, at the conclusion of the list. So starting with Manatee County Commissioner Betsy Benack. Sally Dion with the U.S. House of Representatives representing Vern Buchanan. Commissioner Robin D. Sabatino with Manatee County. Virginia Haley, President, Visit Sarasota. Sharon Hillstrom, President and CEO of Brainton Economic Area Development. I butchered that. Brainton Air Economic Development Corporation. Sorry about that. Mark Huey, Sarasota Economic Development. Commissioner Stephen Johnson, Manatee County. Christine Robinson, Executive Director of the Argus Foundation. Mary Dockerty Slap, Gulf Coast Builders Exchange. Commissioner Charles Smith, Manatee County. Commissioner Priscilla Wisnant Trace, Manatee County. Commissioner Carol Whitmore, Manatee County. Uh, I'd also like to recognize Annie Ross, Executive Director of the Lakewood Ranch Town Hall, and also Michael Gallen, who joins us today from the Manatee Chamber of Commerce. How about a round of applause? Well, today's programs and, and really all of the Alliance programs don't happen um, without the support of our annual sponsors. So I'd like to share with you and, and thank our, our sponsors for the year this year at the Alliance, starting with the Bradenton Herald, Kirkgreen Barbario, Lakewood Ranch Communities, Schroeder Manatee Ranch, Synovus. Our executive sponsors include ABC7, Gallagher MGA, the Herald Tribune, Homes by Town, Home Watch Caregivers of Lakewood Ranch, iHeart Media, Lakewood Ranch Commercial, Lakewood Ranch Community Activities, Lakewood Ranch Medical Center, Manatee County, Michael Saunders, Norton Hammersley, South Tech, The Observer Group, and Willis Smith. You can also refer to your program as well as the screen for our corporate sponsors, and I know we have a lot of you in the room today, as well as our associate level sponsors. How about a round of applause for all of these sponsors? I'd also like to thank our friends from METV today who are here with us. We're so grateful for you and for uh, you joining us. This will be recorded, and we will let you know through the Alliance eBlast when this uh, recording will be available for any colleagues that you have that may not have been able to attend today. Well, we are going to do something brand new, something pretty state-of-the-art today. So I'm going to ask each of you to pull out your cell phones. Everybody take your cell phone out, put it in your hand. 
Everybody grab it. Both Mr. Harmer and Mr. Hunsaker want to hear from you today. You know, there's a lot of topics that they could cover up here from the stage, but we're going to have all of you have the opportunity to share, you know, what it is you really want to hear about, and David Fink, our moderator, is going to help to guide the discussion around what people in this room want to hear about. So I'd like to ask you, you can either text or you can do it via the web. It's on the screen. It's also in your program. But you're going to text LWRBA to 22333. And we're going to do a little practice run. So this is going to be a practice question. It's going to populate the live results on the screen here for us. And then later in the program, David Fink is going to prompt you on some topics that you can select um, kind of your, your number one interest for the day. And that'll help, like I said, guide the discussion of our county administrators. So are we in a good place? Has everybody pulled that up on their phone? Okay. All right, so we need, this is a, a test question. We need to answer, you need to answer by typing and texting into your phone. If you are from Sarasota County, press A. Manatee County B, or if you're from a an, an separate county, which I know we've got a few here today from other counties, you're going to want to push C. So you can see by the screen, wow, we're trending. We've got a lot of Manatee County folks in the house today. But continue doing this. This will continue to, to populate for the next few minutes. And I also want to remind you to please keep your phones out. You don't need to put them back in your purse. You want to keep them out so later in the program, you're able to participate in the survey. All right, like we do at all Alliance events, we always say at the Alliance, when you come to our luncheon, you're going to leave with three things. You're going to have a great meal. You're going to leave with some good information that you had before you walked in the door today. And you're also going to have the opportunity to meet some people that you may not have known when you walked in the door. So we're going to take about two minutes, and I do mean two minutes, to go around the table, introduce yourselves, name and company name, and then I'll need to bring you right back here, and we'll be bringing up Lori Ruth, our chairman of the board. So two to three minutes, go. Okay, you should be wrapping it up and making it away, making your way around the table. And if we could have your attention up here again. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our 2017 chairman of the board, Lori Ruth. And can I just say, she has been hustling like crazy uh, to make everything here at the Alliance run smoothly this year. Please join me in giving Lori Ruth just a warm and sincere welcome and thanks from the Alliance. Good afternoon, everybody. I have the privilege of talking about Ranch Rewards today. Ranch Rewards is a program that we put together to help reward our members who are out there recruiting, talking up the Alliance, and maybe inviting them to a luncheon, one of our networking programs, and then they end up joining. So we reward you for that. And in the month of April, we didn't have a chance to congratulate our winner there, but one of our members, actually several of our members, donate the prize. So in April, Danny Fox of Danny Fox Hypnosis donated a $100 gift card to Main Street Tutoria, another one of our members, to the winner. And Jonathan Marsh from Home Helpers Home Care was the winner. He brought in the most members in the month of April. And for May, we had Matt Andrews from Anne Maria Oyster Bar, donate a $100 gift card from Anne Maria Oyster Bar. And the winner for the month of May was, I have the wrong, Fern Grace, excuse me. I don't have the updated form, so thank you. So thank you all for talking about the Alliance. And if you have any questions, people are in interested in the Alliance, and maybe you're not comfortable, please grab one of us. Somebody on the membership committee will be happy to help you through that process. I absolutely 
love Wednesdays when we have a luncheon at the Alliance. I get so excited. And maybe if it's not just a luncheon, it might be an event because I'm kind of on the inside, so I know what's coming, and I've got the inside scoop. And, you know, I'm not the only one who has the inside scoop. People who work in the Alliance and as well as on the committees, they're helping put these programs together. So it takes quite a bit of doing, and so you have all this time to say, oh, wow, today's finally that face-to-face -face luncheon. So you get excited about that. So today's luncheon, like we had mentioned, it's put together by either programming or the Governmental Affairs Committee. And the Governmental Affairs Committee is responsible for today's luncheon as well as one that we have in October. This is the part of our mission statement that they're in charge of. It's to educate. Our mission statement, just to remind everybody, is to connect, which you just did before with our membership moment, educate, we're about to do that now, and to strengthen our business communities, our companies within the Lakewood Ranch community. So we want to make sure that we have an opportunity all the time to do this so that we grow as a strong business community. So today's luncheon, like I mentioned, is brought to you by the Governmental Affairs Committee, otherwise known as GAC. Susan Goldstein and Paul Adamson and their committee have worked really hard putting together this special, special luncheon. So what they do is when they're in committee, they figure out what's the topic, who's a relevant speaker, who's willing to speak, because that's important, who's able to speak, and then they toss things back and forth. So one of the things that, that they also do is they have to figure out the format. And today's format did not happen by accident. Actually, one of GAC's VIP members stepped up to the plate, carefully planned out what the topics were and the questions that needed to be asked. Not only that, but he also volunteered to be the moderator of today's luncheon. So today's, today's moderator is Mr. David Fink. David was the 2015 chairman of the board. He currently still sits on the board. He's very active in our sponsorship committee as well as the governmental affairs committee. He was instrumental in making 2017 road trip up to Tallahassee to meet with our local representatives, and it was a huge success. Based on that visit, we now have a template of how to structure a well thought out agenda also provide not only a purpose, but a benefit to both our local representatives while serving in Tallahassee and our members back here at home. When David is not volunteering all of his time at the Alliance, he's the Regional Vice President of Halliday Financial in Sarasota. He's successful in everything he does, and he is a very dear friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the stage David Fink. Yeah, well, that whole volunteering thing was a little bit overspoken. It was, uh, okay, who in, the who in the committee wants to do this? And people sort of pointed at me, and I, I tried to pawn it off on a few people, Lori being one of them, and nobody would actually take the reins and run with it. So, so you guys are stuck with me. I apologize. Um, you know, in addition to GAC, I, I really want to thank a few people, the board of directors. Um, between the board of directors, GAC, and a few other interested parties, we, that, the questions that we're going to be going over today were developed by them. And I, I want to also thank Heather and the staff of the Alliance because nothing happens without them. And, and last but not least, you know, both of our county administrators and their staffs, because I know they put in a ton of time getting ready for today. So, so hopefully this is a worthwhile program. And, and this is a really important program, despite the fact that, you know, when, when we did a little poll, you only saw 20% of the attendees here from Sarasota. You know, probably about 50% of our members either work or live in Sarasota. Uh, Tom breathed a sigh of relief, I noticed, at the table, because as we were going around introducing all the dignitaries who were here, none of his bosses happened to be here. So, so he could feel, speak freely. Ed doesn't have necessarily the same latitude today. Um, but, but this is really an important event. You know, when, when I first got involved with the Alliance, I sat down, many of you know Angela and John over at Grapevine. Angela said something really interesting to me. She goes, you know, Lakewood Ranch is the perfect place. It's like Switzerland. People in Sarasota won't go to Bradenton. People in Bradenton won't go to Sarasota. But you know what? Everybody will come to Lakewood Ranch. It's pretty much right. Pretty much right. And on top of that, the timing's perfect. You all know, and we, we heard Rex last month, Waterside's about to get going. 
Um, in, in a few, I guess in a few months, we'll have the first, according to Richard Bedford, the first human beings residing in Waterside. Um, so within, t within you know, a pretty short time, we're going to have 5,000 folks, 5,000 rooftops over there actually living in Sarasota County. So those numbers are going to change pretty dramatically, which is why what's going on in both Manatee and Sarasota is critical. Uh, just a quick word about the format today. I'm going to introduce uh, Tom and then Ed. Each of them is going to come up and, and say, you know, five, six, seven minutes worth of, of their comments. Uh, then we're going to sit at the table here and have a true panel discussion. Uh, you all will be instrumental in determining what we discuss, uh, so stay tuned for that. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Tom Harmer. Tom has over 30 years experience with local government on top of experience in both the private sector and academia. Starting in Tallahassee, he was Deputy Fire Chief and Emergency Manager. He moved to Titusville, where he served in a variety of roles. Fire Chief, Emergency Manager, Executive Director of the Community Development Agency, and eventually the City Manager, a position he held for almost eight years. During his time in Titusville, Tom was recognized as Florida's Fire Chief of the Year in 1999 and was a finalist for City Manager of the Year in 2006. As if his day job wasn't enough, while he was in Titusville, he earned a master's in public administration from the University of Central Florida, which augmented his bachelor's in fire and safety engineering from the University of Cincinnati and National Fire Academy's Executive Fire Office program degree. Following his, his graduation from USF, and while still serving the residents of Titusville, I don't know where this guy actually had any time to sleep, uh, he served as adjunct professor at, U at UCF and chaired its public administration advisory board. In 2006, he, he left public service, joined the private sector, and oversaw all real estate and public private development projects in the southeast U.S. as senior vice president for the Pizzuti companies. Um, I guess when it's in your blood to serve, you, you come back. In 2012, he got back into public service, came back to Sarasota County, was named interim county administrator in 2013, and the permanent county administrator in 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the Sarasota County Administrator, Tom Harmer. Wow, what a big group. I thought there was 10 or 12 of us getting together. I I mentioned to our Board of County Commissioners that I was meeting in Northport today, so that might explain why they didn't make it here. So don't let that out of the bag for me, please. Um, a, lo a lot of background was mentioned. I want to just spend another couple minutes and share with you my start in the public sector. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm sitting in that seat at work, but really, I started in this business as an interrogator in the United States Marine Corps, uh, which is really an interesting profession, if you think. And, I, and, I, and I've said this story before to some, but you know, being a, a, a Marine and then a Marine Corps interrogator, when I left the profession, they made me turn in a lot of my tools, so that the bamboo shoots and the, the electric car charger, the towels and the buckets of water, I had to leave back with the Marines when I transitioned to local government. Um, but, I, but I do highlight, as a 17, 18, 19 year old in the Marine Corps, uh, I did learn a really important factor, and, and they teach you that interrogation school, is the ability to listen. Uh, and I try and carry that forward, because my second job wasn't mentioned. My first job in local uh, government was as a 911 dispatcher. And again, the first day on the job out of the Marine Corps, they said, you want to know what's most important about being an effective 911 dispatcher? It's listening, because you never know what's going to be on the other end of that call, and you need to pay attention so you can apply the right resources and respond appropriately to the situation. And I kind of credit those early career opportunities to help me as I progressed. As you heard, kind of an unusual career path, 911 dispatcher, firefighter, emergency manager. I served as the emergency manager for the city of Tallahassee. Um, fire chief, city manager, I found out there are fires in City Hall, and I will tell you, we have the fire departments represented here today, but there are also fires in county administration buildings as well, so I'm glad that I have some level of firefighting experience, though they don't let me ride on a fire truck anymore. The, um, after 26 years, I did leave the public sector. I had an opportunity to go in the private sector, and I spent six years in uh, real estate development, working for a national developer out of Columbus, Ohio. I managed the Southeast operations. 
office and industrial, commercial development mostly all over the country. Large buildings, office complexes, office parks, research parks, industrial parks, distribution centers. We built one building just before I left that was 1.6 million square feet under roof. One building with one tenant. That's a big building. Um, uh, and so that gave me a lot of different experience uh, when, I, when I really was asked if I would be interested in coming back into the public sector. And at first I said no because I was flying on corporate jets, I was drinking wine for lunch, I was entertaining people at um, skyboxes around the country because the guy that I worked for, Ron Pizzuti, the chairman of the Pizzuti companies, was one of the original partners of the limited clothing store, a very high net worth guy, has a, a part-time residence here in Sarasota at the Ritz, um, really took care of me. And, and I also was in development from 2006 to 2012. If you think about development in 2006, 2012, you learn a lot in development in 2006 through 2012. And when I got the call in 2012, asked if I would consider coming back into the public sector, there's no way I would have done that unless, except that it was Sarasota County. You know, this portion of Florida is just, you know, it's special. We know, we know that. I grew up in Florida. I'm, I'm born in Philadelphia, retired uh, my, with my parents when I was 12. Uh, and I've been in Florida my entire career. Uh, and so I know this area is a special place. My, my daughter-in-law is from Venice, grew up on the island, and so we spent some time here. Uh, you know, Ed and I both wanted to make sure we emphasize to you that we are from the government and we are here to help. Um, I won't spend a lot of time, I think you know a lot about Sarasota County, but you know, we are an older community in Sarasota County, uh, about 53 uh, years of age is the average age, but you can, you can go out to Longboat Key where it's 72. You can go down into uh, Northport where it's in the low 40s. You can go to Venice where it's uh, in the high 60s. So we have some very uh, different pockets around the county, the diversity of our demographics, um, but we are an older community. We're a less diverse community. Uh, we're a more educated community. We have a higher income when you compare us to the state and national, and all those things make it uh, both an attractive place and a challenging place. Uh, an interesting statistic I wanted to mention in Sarasota County, 2,600 people a year, more, you know, more than 2,600 people a year die than are born every year in Sarasota County. So we have 2,600 more, I wanna make sure I get that right, 2,600 more deaths than births um, which means our growth is migration. That's how we grow in Sarasota County. I, I did want to say, I know Ed's going to get up here and talk. We do a lot together. Uh, I, would, I would say, obviously, public safety is important. We're working on an 800 megahertz system together. We are a part of the Peace River water supply system together. We buy water from Manatee County. Sarasota County does as part of the water system. We're working on uh, Nathan Benerson Park and the World Rowing Championship together. We uh, have annual joint meetings with our boards. We have secret quarterly meetings where him and I meet in a restaurant and talk. They're not really secret, but they're, you know, we don't, we don't rent a plane and fly down Main Street and tell everyone we're meeting. And even he answers his phone when I call him, which is a big bonus. I know you can't see all that. If you're interested in our org chart, I'm sorry. Uh, but if you really would like to see that, it is on our website. But I just want to say we're also a major employer. We have over 2,200 employees, 18 different departments. A lot of times you don't even think about all the services that a county provides, whether it's public transportation or water, wastewater, stormwater, uh, transportation, fire, EMS, libraries, parks. There's a lot of different things that go on every day that you don't really think about. But it's also scary if you're a county administrator because if 10% of your employees are having a bad day, then there's, 20, there's 220 employees out there that I'm a little bit nervous about. Um, fortunately, though, we do really get some positive feedback from the public. We also, though, like a major employer, we have about 30% of our workforce is eligible to retire in the next five years. 30% of 2,200 people, that's a lot of individuals, institutional knowledge, experience, et cetera. You know, we, we've been fortunate. These are just awards we've received since the beginning of our fiscal year. Um, I just wanted to call out a couple of those. You've, you've read about these, you've heard about these. Obviously, U.S. News and Report, really a big deal, identifying our area and Sarasota as the number one place in the state of Florida to live. 
uh, top 100 in the U.S., actually ranked 21st. TripAdvisor, number one beach in the country again, uh, actually number five in the world. Um, big, big recognition. And the only other one I point out that's internal is the National Procurement Institute. It wasn't but six or seven years ago that Sarasota County went through a very public issue related to its procurement. I'm proud to say two years ago and again this past year, we've now been recognized with a certificate of excellence in our procurement processes. And I've had an opportunity to be invited. It's not always a good thing, but they invite you to talk about the turnaround. And how, and how we were able to do what we're doing now. So we've received some good recognition as part of that process. We meet each year with our board. It's the only board meeting that's not televised, and we do that in December. And out of that comes our strategic priorities. We actually have 30 board initiatives, and 10 uh, of those are identified as the most important priorities for the board for the next year. These are the 10 priorities that our board identified in uh, the December retreat that we had. I'm not gonna go over each of those, but you're not surprised, obviously, by what's on the list. Uh, there's three on the list related to economic development, whether it's small business strategies or performance measures or targeted industries, uh, housing affordability, homelessness. Uh, I would pay attention to the Unified Development Code. Uh, a year or so ago, the county finished up its process to update its comprehensive plan Following behind that now is to take the zoning manual, the land development regulations, and put that all together in an updated, not just format, but in an updated process. Uh, and, it ha and that hasn't occurred in a long time, updating our land development codes. So pay attention to that. There's a lot of outreach opportunities to, to share and provide input. So those are our priorities. I'll just finish up by saying, you know, we try to put an emphasis on customer service. Quality of life, there's a lot of reasons why people come here. 97% of the respondents to our annual survey that USF does says that the people that live here, uh, the quality of life they consider to be good or excellent. 93% uh, say they're satisfied generally with the services we provide, which scares me. Um, and then um, we have 86% will say that um, we give the right answer when they call us. Uh, so, and that's a high percent when you call someone randomly on your cell phone and say, what do you, what do you think about Sarasota County government? Uh, but the way you get a hold of us and call us for hopefully that correct information is 861-5000. We have one number that we advertise, 861-5000. You call that one number, you can get to anyone. But also, if you have an issue and you call, it's a pothole or it's a tree in the right of way, it's something with drainage. They automatically can take that. Whoever answers the call can put it right into our work order system, give you a work order number, can follow up with you when it's taken care of, and we'll track that all the way through. And we've, this past year, we've now implemented C-Click Fix, where you can actually download the app and do it by taking a picture of that pothole, hitting a button, shooting it right into our system, getting a work order number. You'll know when it's acknowledged. You'll know when it's closed out. So we're trying to do those type of things to make customer service a high priority for us, just like we're also trying to make business climate a high priority for us. So with that, uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for letting me make some introductory comments. I did appreciate the survey because 80%, I assume, of the questions will be directed towards Ed as we get to that portion. Yeah, th thank you, Tom. And, and Sorry, technical difficulties there. Um, yeah, I can tell you, I, I, I've had the opportunity to have dealings with both counties, and uh, you know the, those stats are 100% correct. I mean, you, your county staff does a great job and very responsive, so applaud that. Uh, our next guest, Ed Hunsaker. Ed has a strong background in all facets, facets of government operations. After getting his both his bachelor's and MBA from St. Louis University, he began as deputy county auditor for the St. Louis County government. He also served for 10 years as CFO for the Bi-State Development Agency in St. Louis. In Florida, he served as assistant county administrator for Hillsborough County for 15 years and then as county manager for Osceola County for another three. He was asked to serve as county administrator for Manatee County in 2007 and has held that role ever since. 
Um, for those of us who have dealt with Manatee County both before and after Ed's arrival, I think uh, we'd all agree that Manatee County has become a much more business-like, customer-friendly place, and, and that's really attributable to the, to the message and the tone from the top, and that, that's Mr. Ed Hunsaker. Uh, the most important part, Ed and his wife Sharon have three adult sons and five grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Mr. Ed Hunsaker. Tom, about that 80%. <laughs> Tough questions go to Tom. John, we ready? So we got a little preview of uh, Manatee County and where we are and where we're headed and the relationship with uh, Lakewood Ranch, SMR, because when I came, it was rocky around here. We were into confrontation instead of cooperation and we've tried to change that over time. Uh, we spend quite a bit of time both myself and my staff working with uh, Rex Jensen and his staff on trying to improve how it is that we do business because it's all about doing business. It's not just with SMR, it's with everybody in the community because we're here to serve. That's our job. It's uh, no bones about it. We have a philosophy in this county government that uh, we're serious about and that seriousness is um, represented by our philosophy that comes through in the term ACE. Every new employee gets a little speech about ACE. It uh, stands for accountability, civility, and ethics. We hold every, every employee accountable for their job. We do pay for performance, and we tell them, it's your job, you will be held accountable, and you will be measured every year based on your performance. Civility, well, we just don't tolerate incivility. And ethics, well, there's not a day goes by that you don't read about somebody in government trying to line their pockets because of their government job. We don't tolerate that either. And then we finish up with the fact that this ain't baseball. There's no three strikes. You violate our little ace principles, and you'll be gone before the sun sets. And in that concept, we understand that the customer is king, and we're here to serve. We're a service industry, and service is important. If your project can wait till tomorrow, don't. Do it today. And that's important because this is a growing community. Up there on the chart, you can see the population growth in the county over the years. It's a growing county. And our relationship with the folks at Lakewood Ranch has grown over time also because you can see how it has grown and will continue to grow. The population of Lakewood Ranch could be in the Manatee City County side of the border, 9% of the overall county population in the year 2045. And everything we do in the county is always looking out 20 to 30 years. Where's the county going to be? How many people are going to be here? And how are we going to accommodate them? Where are the roads? Where's the schools? Where's the parks? How do we deal with them? How do we manage it? How do we make it livable? How do we sustain making this community as nice in 2045 as we've come to enjoy today? How do we partner with people like Rex Jensen and others around the community to make this grow in a place that we, in a way we can all be proud of? How do we make it a place that um, we can keep our kids in town? My wife and I raised three sons in Florida, and they all left town to get jobs. What's wrong with that? It's not that we miss the three boys, but there's five grandkids that we kind of miss. <laughs> what do we do to make a community that young people want to stay, where they can find employment, they can find happiness here? They don't need to go to Atlanta or New York or San Francisco. They can find all that here. Because we know we're here, we live in paradise. Why move? But it's a challenge. Here's the infrastructure partnership that we've developed over years, planning for the growth. Those are the roads. You can see them up there. I won't read them all off. But they're important for the future growth. And it's a great partnership with SMR because they build concurrent or in advance 
of the development showing up. And we continue to work with Rex and his staff about the roadway network that's going to come in the few years, in the coming 10 years. <laughs> now, for those of you that were around, when Rex was here and he said he paid for those, what was it, 18 miles worth of roadways, he forgot to include the fact that we gave Rex impact fee credits for every mile that he built. So he wasn't in the charity business. He, he earned it and we paid him. So, here's the roads that came. They're important. These are the roads that are coming because Lorraine Road's major road now, but Uline's coming. And those to the east, more roads are coming. 44th will be continued to the east. Um, there's intersections coming. These are projects that we see coming down the road. All of those are in the new infrastructure sales tax that we're very thankful for the voters of Manatee County because these projects will now be able to tackle to make the community a little bit better than it already is. They're important things to do. Resurfacing roads, very important projects as we move forward. A Lakewood Ranch Library, a challenge. We need a library in Lakewood Ranch. That's on our plans. <laughs> I was hoping Rex would be here today. We've been talking about where that library might go. And in case you haven't noticed, Rex is pretty opinionated on things. And he's going to tell me where he wants that library. But we work with him. And we have Parks Master Plan. We have collected a lot of impact fees over the years park impact fees, and we have a lot of those impact fees in the bank because this summer the board will be receiving a master plan for parks. We haven't had a master plan update in years. I don't even want to think how many years it's been. But with that master plan, we'll be able to figure out what it is we need and where it is we need to put those things. And with that, we'll update our capital improvement program and forge out for the next uh, 10 to 20 years what parks need to be built. Because we think that we need a GT Bray Park on the east side. Why does everybody need to go to the major park in Manatee County and they all have to travel to GT Bray? We ought to replicate that out east here, somewhere. And we think the master plan, when it comes into the Board of County Commissioners, we'll have a community discussion and we'll determine just where that should be. It's an important thing to do. Also, trails are important. State's got a thing working uh, plan to take it from the north end of the state to the south end, and we already own some land on the eastern side of Lakewood Ranch. It will connect to the north in Hillsborough County, to the south in Sarasota County, and that's in our vision to incorporate that trail so that you can traverse this county from north to south end. It's an important project. All right, David, you're on. <laughs> We're finished. All right, Dan, you can get my ugly mug off there. Um, everybody, we need your cell phones back out again. We're, we're going to do a poll, and, and this is where you participate and help us decide exactly where this conversation is going to go. Uh, so please, uh, you got that under control, Dan? All right. Uh, the, the choices are on the screen, and I will move over here and uh, let you all vote. Oh. Heather wants me to read the choices for those who can't see in the back. Traffic Mobility A, Affordable Attainable Housing Development B, County Budget C, Economic Development D, uh, Future Issues the Counties Will Face E, Water Issues, Storms, Fresh Water, Sea Level Rise F. So apparently nobody cares about budgets or water issues. So. <laughs> And big, big surprise, the two hot issues, apparently, uh, housing and, uh, and mobility. But, uh, and economic, I think Sharon's voting like six times, economic <laughs> development. <so. laughs> All right, well, well, we'll start off with, uh, with the affordable housing. All right, gentlemen, 
Can everybody hear me okay? Wonderful. Uh, affordable housing. You know, th there's really two parts to affordable housing. One is the affordability of the home itself. Um, the other is wages. Um, you, we could put somebody in a house, but if they can't afford to stay there, the house all of a sudden doesn't become too affordable. So it ends up, uh, you know, dovetailing in perhaps with some economic development issues. Uh, l let's talk about the actual affordability of, of the house for, of the housing first. Um, you know, we've seen more and more, I mean, this has been an issue, it's not just an issue in our community, this is an issue nationwide. Um, but we're seeing more and more that our workforce can't afford to live here. You know, we'll, we'll start with you, Ed, and, and Tom, you'll take over. What, what's Manatee County, Ed, doing to, to combat that and, and to make Manatee County a more livable, affordable place for our upcoming, for our current workers and our upcoming workforce? It's a very important topic currently within the Board of County Commissioners. In the last year, we've hired Jerry Lopez to help us with that endeavor because it's a challenge to make it affordable. One of the things that we've done is created a, a tax increment financing district that we've renamed the Southwest District. And we've taken the entire Southwest District, the oldest part of the county, the original part of the county, some refer to as the Tamiami Trail District, and we've set that up with a program to redevelop the entire corridor. We're rewriting our land development core code to make it more convenient for development to take on that area where the infrastructure is already in place. We've set up an incentive program for developers to come into the area um, and look at where that infrastructure is already in place to see how they can make a go of affordable housing. We're about to um, modify a fund that we set up years ago to help pay for all the government costs affiliated with affordable housing. Because the government charges from the time they pick building department fees, their impact fees, the water and sewer fees, all of those costs are very burdensome when you're trying to do affordable housing. And we're trying to set up a program that we can help defray those costs in order to encourage affordable housing. We're not particularly interested in getting into owning and operating housing units. There's other branches of government that can do that. Ours is to take the ship funding programs and modify and use those programs and incentivize them by using our funds to help offset the cost of government fees. Well, well and let me, let me push before we get to you, Tom, because I'm going to ask you the, the same question so that you could tee it up. Um, but, but you're talking about defraying some of these costs. Now, when, when you look at the government costs associated with housing, you've got, I mean, by the time you throw in impact fees, both for the county and the school and, and water connection fees and sewer and permit fee, I mean, you're, you're probably, I mean, depending on the size of the house and the location of the county, I understand, but you're, we're talking 19, 20, 21,000 mm dollars. -hmm. So how would this deferment, deframent process actually work? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry down there is putting together the program, but the idea is we currently have a plan that was put together years ago, but it only provides for paying the impact fees for single family homes. What we want to do is come up with a program that pays not only single family homes, multifamily homes, and much more than just the impact fees. It's those utility fees, it's those building fees, it's any and all fees. How do we set up a program to help defray some or all of those fees to make it more affordable for a developer to want to do housing in the urban core. Okay, so, so it's to be determined, it sounds like. It's coming soon. Okay, Tom, so Sarasota County. Good, so uh, to be determined, no. <laughs> I, I like that no, answer. No, your, your bosses aren't here, you can yeah. speak freely now. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, uh, let me take a little bit different tack to add to what uh, Ed said, but I think being in the development business, understanding what are the cost factors associated with a project and in Sarasota County, land is expensive. And that's one of the big cost factors when you look about uh, uh, doing a development and having a return on investment so that you get the financing so you can develop the property. And so your rents or your sales are gonna have to be at a certain level to pay for that. And so I think, especially in some pretty big pockets of Sarasota County, that's a big challenge that we have is the land cost. From a, from a standpoint of the regulatory authority, I think looking at things like density is really important. 
looking at things like parking requirements, looking at stormwater. Those are things that have significant cost factors to the project. And if you can regionalize your stormwater so that you don't have to do it on that particular piece of property, and maybe the developer can pay into it at a lesser price, or instead of requiring two or three parking spots per unit, because you're building it in a way that it's near the public transit system and or you're encouraging other means of transportation so you can minimize the parking requirements, then you minimize the amount of land that's needed and you minimize the cost of the infrastructure. All those things can have a positive impact. The density piece, if you look at what the city of Sarasota did in the Rosemary District, they took that one section there that was 25 units an acre and they tripled it to 75 units an acre. And by doing that, within a very short time frame, now you see a couple thousand units coming out of the ground that are mostly rental units, which I think in Sarasota County there's been a minimal amount of new multifamily, so it's good to see some of that multifamily come up. Well, and, and you know, this is your pushback. So, so you know, what kind of appetite does the county Board of Commissioners have to, to change densities? I mean, you know, we went through a, a protracted process here to get Lakewood Ranch to actually be able to do any residential development in Sarasota County. It took 10 years. Um, yeah, so, and I, and I understand, you, you, you walk a fine line. You've got your bosses, you've got your job, you've got the community, but, but you know, what, what sort of appetite is there to actually make it happen versus, you know, I mean, it sounds like a great idea. Well, no, I think when you, especially when you talk about density, but also the tagline of affordable housing. Um, so how many people want an affordable housing project right next to their home? So, all, all the commissioners okay. are raising their hands. <laughs> so, so, but, but there is that stigma that's associated with affordable housing. I know our board is focused on workforce housing as a priority, less so than subsidized housing, uh, and, and how do you get the price point at the right place. Um, but, but I know it's hard to be a commissioner because when you have those public meetings and you have 100 people show up in yellow shirts or red shirts or whatever the, whatever the uh, theme is, um, and they're saying not here. It's a good idea, but not here. It's very hard to um, deal with that. And it makes it very difficult if you're the developer trying to place something like that when the community has said it's a priority. So I don't think there's an easy solution for that. There are places that maybe make more sense than others. It should be, you know, infill is a good opportunity because of access to infrastructure and transportation, et cetera. But, but not everyone gets excited when you talk about building affordable housing next to them. Well, and let, let's take the other part of the equation. So, you know, we've got the affordable or attainable or workforce housing, I and mean, we, we can call it any one of a number of names, but let's get on to the wage issue. Um, you know, keep, keeping the workers here, and this is the EDC slant on this, but, but keeping the workers here is important, but we've got to pay them. If we, if we can get wages to a level where they're high enough, then all of a sudden lots of things become affordable, right? So, so we've had the, the state legislature take an ax to you know, Enterprise Florida, the state legislature, you know, we've got all sorts of challenges. Um, so what's the solution? How, how, do, how do you work with, within your counties and, and perhaps with each other to make our entire area here a, a place where we do have increasing wages, we are attractive to the younger workforce, which then brings in more businesses as well. And I'll let you start that all one. Right. All right, thank you. Uh, what did you say, to be determined? <laughs> uh, we have a, a special workshop with our board uh, next Wednesday afternoon on the 24th that's specific to economic development, incentives, targeted industries. And so I don't want to preempt that discussion because the board really wants to have that discussion. Uh, and so we're going to try and set the table with about 30 minutes of intro and then the rest of the afternoon is the board kind of sorting through and talking about economic development. It's hard. I, we feel it in the county. It's not just private employers. I was trying to hire an intern. There's a national intern program. Uh, and, and we had individuals apply and we selected and they came and looked for housing. And, and the first two that we selected called and said, sorry, I can't afford to live there. Uh, I've had a private business. I meet with a lot of the private businesses uh, a couple times a year where we invite them in, just CEOs, and talk about what's going on in the business. And they've said that they can't hire six-figure employees because where they live right now somewhere else, you know, wherever it is, San Antonio, Austin, or somewhere else, that, that their quality of life and the, the home and their proximity to downtown, they can't afford to have that same quality of life and expectation here in, in Sarasota. So it is very difficult. We're fortunate. We do have a, 
our own economic incentive program. We've got about $6 million in the bank set aside for our board to apply. It's pay for performance. So it's a certain job paying a certain rate that can be applied towards certain targeted industries. Um, that, I think, you know, gives us a little bit more flexibility. We're not just tied to the state programs. Um, and that's going to be a big part of the discussion we have on Wednesday. Okay, now, just on that discussion on Wednesday, is it going to be open to public comment or is it strictly a board discussion? It's going to be a board discussion. There's always opportunity at our meetings to have public comment in the beginning and at the end, but the actual discussion will be for the board. You know, if, if you follow government, it's tough being a commissioner. You can't talk to other commissioners except in a public meeting. And so this is an opportunity for them to talk among themselves. Uh, in a public light. Okay. And Ed, I know you, you and Sharon held a, a panel just the other day discussing this very topic, so uh, enlighten us. Um, economic development and recruiting quality jobs have been the forefront of what we've been trying to do with the Board of County Commissioners adopting programs back in 2009 and 10. We also have money set aside for job creation and quality jobs, and people come in and create quality jobs. We will incentivize those and it's a detailed program. It's been well laid out. It's been very successful. But the biggest challenge we have is our own workforce. We refer to it as stress in our workforce because we know um, trying to recruit and retain employees in this environment is difficult. In the downturn during the recession, when there was a lot of layoffs in the private sector, we staffed up pretty good. And now we turn around, we're losing them. Uh, we lose engineers. We lose... Um, well, we lose about every profession we have, and it's, uh, it's a tough sell. Um, we have a pay for performance program within the county government, um, but still we, we're, we're seeing a lot of turnover. The board's gonna have a discussion um, on Tuesday at their board meeting uh, just about our transit system. Um, we start off in our transit system with our drivers that uh, make a pretty good wage. Well, they make more than surrounding areas, but in short order, you can go north to Pinellas County and Hillsborough County, and because they're unionized shops within a year, they'll go north. And we just can't keep bus drivers. And we don't want to be in a position that uh, we'll miss runs because somebody's waiting at the bus stop to get to work. And if the bus doesn't show up, they're not going to get to work. And it's getting real close because we just can't recruit them at the salaries we offer. So it's our own workforce that's one of our biggest challenges. Well, and that's a, a good segue into uh, some of the transportation issues. And, and you know, Ed, you did a pretty nice job in your presentation of outlining a lot of the, the road work and the grid work that's being done in Manatee. You know, Tom, you, you didn't have that in your presentation, so people don't know what's coming. But, but you know, I mean, we know that Lorraine Road is being extended out to Fruitville. Um, it's going to create a bit of a choke point there. Lakewood Ranch is probably, I don't know if, uh, if they've got, you've gotten the final signatures on all the deals you're working, but, you know, that's a good 15 months out. You know, what, so once Lorraine Road is done, what else is coming, and it, are we just moving problems fr from 75 eastward, as people use that, and get choked up at, at Fruitville and, and trying to come into a two-lane road and so on and so forth? Uh, and so I'll give a real quick story. Back uh, three and a half, four years ago when I was uh, um, asked to serve as the county administrator, I left the board meeting, went home that night. The next day I spoke to leadership Sarasota and their primary question was, how did you let traffic get so bad at University and I-75? <laughs> and I'm thinking, well darn, I have 12 hours in and University and I-75, I've taken on that full burden. But, you know, I, I will say that you know, we worked together, flew up to the state, met with FDOT, with county commissioners on both sides, and, and was able to talk to the secretary. Rex was with us. Yep, Rex. Was we're, we were able to um, explain to them what Manatee's doing, what Sarasota County would do, and they did find almost $80 million to do the Diverging Diamond. It wasn't in their program. So I think that was a big anchor project for us. You mentioned Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. You know, I think the segment to Sarasota County or to the end of Rex's uh, property is fine. We're doing, in government, you know, when you take someone's land from them, you either can take it forcefully, which you don't want to do, because that can be more costly and painful for a lot of reasons. You want to do it cooperatively. So 
there's right-of-way acquisition that's necessary. And when you also end up at Fruitville and have to involve the FDOT, it gets a little bit more complicated with FDOT and what the property owner is trying to do. I think we're on the verge of finalizing all of the right-of-way acquisition for Lakewood Ranch Boulevard, which should enable Rex then to just continue on with Lakewood Ranch from the property line through to Fruitville, which will make a big, it's a reliever road, just like Cattlemen is. Um, so getting off the interstate when you don't have to use it and using Cattlemen, using Lakewood Ranch Boulevard, Lorraine, same thing, parallel, is basically done. It should be open by July. Uh, it's closed off right now, but it's 90 some percent complete. Probably some final punch list kind of things. Um, we're gonna monitor that uh, intersection of Lorraine and Fruitville. There's, um, there's some term lanes that'll go in on Fruitville to help facilitate that. And then if we need to do other traffic control improvements, we can. We partnered with uh, Rex and Lakewood Ranch Boulevard to design an overpass that will drop down into Cattleman Road, again, to provide a crossover separate from University and Fruitville. And so all those kind of things are in the works with Lorraine first, followed back behind with Lakewood Ranch Boulevard, and then ultimately um, the overpass is a little bit farther down the road. But in the immediate area, those are some of the things we're working on. It's, it's important to keep the major grid system operational as far as um, moving traffic around. Ours is to get 44th finished. That's gonna take about another $100 million. But that way you can take Cortez East. Uh, it requires two more bridges, one over the river and one over the interstate to match up out here. And then 44th will continue on the east uh, with the plans that we showed earlier. And the other one is the completion of the Fort Hamer Bridge and that'll make it over the river to the north and that will continue on north, hopefully all the way to the Hillsborough County line. But those are to keep those grid alive and well, keep people off the interstate is the only way to move north and south. Okay, we're, we're running up against our, our deadline, but I'm gonna ask one, uh, one final question here. Um, has to do with the homestead exemption and budgets. And, and this, this plays in, uh, maybe, maybe it's the wrong question to ask, but, uh, but, but this plays into a lot of different themes that we're discussing. So, you know, for those of you who don't know, the, the, the legislature has, you know, put for vote next year an additional $25,000 homestead exemption for certain properties. Um, that will help residents it, that are, own their homes. It may hurt residents that are renting. It may hurt businesses. It will certainly hurt your budgets. Um, you know, what does that do to your affordable, attainable housing equation and you know, just overall budgets? And I know that's a can of worms I just opened, Ed, but uh, you know, it's, it's an important topic. It is extremely important. How many are homestead property owners? How many voted back in 2008 when it went from 25 to 50,000? We were all tickle pink about that. Um, our property tax revenue today is still lower than it was in 2007 because of that. Um, we're scrambling around and we think in 2018 will be the first time since 2007 that current revenues will cover current expenses. We've been living off our savings account to balance the budget since 2007. A noteworthy event. And then in 2018, we'll vote for another reduction in our revenue. We'll be happy, the government will not be so happy. That will put a ding in thing. We have, between the two of us, very high impact fees compared to a lot of other counties. We can build things. We can build roads, we can build parks, we can deal with public safety issues. We have a library impact fee. We'll be able to build a library in Lakewood Ranch. And then we'll all vote for a reduction in property tax revenue to the government. How are we gonna hire a librarian? How are we gonna buy a book? We buy a library, we build a library, and then it's bring your own book. I'm gonna retire next year, but somebody's gonna to have to deal with this issue because it will pass. And if it passes in, Jan in, in November of 18, it'll affect the budget in the year 2020. That's three years out. But at three years out, that number, as I've explained to the Board of County Commissioners, will be a number that's equal to 
taking out the entire park system in Manatee County. But we'll all vote for it. Tom? Well, I don't know what else to add to what, what uh, Ed said, but I would, I, I would say it, 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 it will have a fiscal impact if it passes. And depending on what all of the city and county commissioners do all over the state of Florida, could be different. Uh, cause, because each of us have different situations. You know, I mentioned earlier that 93% of our survey respondents said that they're satisfied with the services in Sarasota County. Well, if we have to cut 7.7 .7 million out of our budget, that will have a service level impact. If for some reason the board decides they want to raise a millage rate, then that will create a shift. It'll shift some of that cost away from some of the homesteaded property to businesses and non-homesteaded properties. So it could change a little bit of that mix. So there's, you know, there's consequences. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we have to also be math majors. We're given a certain amount of money from our boards, and we have to balance the budget and do the best we can with the service levels. Um, and it's a struggle sometimes when the, when the residents say we like the level of service, but we don't want to pay for it. And we just have to sometimes figure that out. <laughs> And I don't know what that means yet. We'll, we'll see what happens in 2018, 2019, and 2020 when Ed's retired. <laughs> and some of us are still trying to figure that out. Well, 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 unfortunately, we've hit our time limit. I've got pages and pages to go, but I know you all have to get back to work. Um, I, I would like to thank both of you for being here and being so forthright. Um, you both have done a phenomenal job in the counties. Ladies and gentlemen, both of our county administrators. And, and now I'd like to turn the mic over to Kim French, our incoming chair. Good afternoon, fellow ranchers. Uh, we've received some very interesting and uh, positive and pretty frank remarks from our two county administrators today. And uh, I've got to say, in these uh, crazy contentious times that we're living in, uh, it's pretty comforting to know that our two counties are being managed by uh, two proven and experienced leaders like these two guys. I'd also like to give a shout out to their staff, staffs, and uh, last but not least, the commissioners who, uh, even though we all live in Shangri-La, we've got a lot of challenges that have to be uh, dealt with, and these are the folks that have to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis, so thank you once again. Uh, I've been tasked before we hit the road here uh, to update you, give you a quick shout out on some upcoming Business Alliance events. Uh, Thursday, May 25th, we have the Battle of the Generations. No, no guns or knives, just verbal. Uh, that'll be at Courtyard by the, at the Marriott, 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, Wednesday, June 7th, we have a June networking social at the new Hyatt Place Hotel uh, from 5 to 7. Uh, Wednesday, June 14th, executive briefing in the morning, building your personal brand networking skills. We can all use that. 7.30 to 9 at Kaiser. And uh, one last shout out, uh, Heather wanted me to tell you, be looking for the East-West uh, event in the fall. We're going to have some details popping out soon. That was a sellout uh, last year, so make sure you jump on that when you see these things come out. With that, everyone have a good rest of the week. We'll see you next month.